Well, welcome back to another vlog. Today I find myself down at um, a place near Folkestone called Sandfire Ho. Uh, Sandfire Ho uh, is probably a relatively new piece of land which was made up of um, what was excavated from the building of the Channel Tunnel. I'm now reading from one of the signs down here. Um, but there was, uh, you're standing on a new piece of land made up of roughly 4.9 million cubic meters of excavated tunnel soil, uh, which is equivalent to about 51,580 double-decker buses. Um, I think half of the soil that was excava excavated went to France and the rest of it uh, came here to the UK and a large portion of that was used to make up uh, this piece of land which was all man-made and is now a bit of a, a nature reserve um, just down by Folkestone. So we're now just having a wander around, uh, seeing what we can find and maybe try and find an image or two. I'm not quite sure uh, what there is down here, whether there's gonna be enough to keep us here for a while. Um, but we'll try and find out. Hopefully we'll get an image or two. And if the vlog is not particularly long, what I might do is take you back to the PC and just show you how I um, process one of the images that hopefully we'll get while we're here. Well, after walking uh, the length of Samphire Ho, um, we've come across this beach, which I believe must be um, Abbot's Cliff Beach. And there seems to be quite a lot of rock formation out there and the, the waves crashing into them. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna venture down onto the beach and see if um, there might be a bit of a seascape image here or not. But uh, we're gonna have a look and see what we can find. I've been uh, walking along this beach now for 10 or 15 minutes, um, trying to find a, a composition for maybe a, a long exposure with some of the rocks out there. Um, I've not managed to find one yet, but I am also a bit mindful of uh, the tide. Uh, it does look like the tide comes up uh, quite far. It's, uh, it's a fair way out, but it's uh, still worth keeping an eye on, uh, which I am doing, make sure I don't get 
cut off by the tide at all, but uh, I'll keep looking for a composition and hopefully we'll come across one soon. Uh, typically I've walked uh, quite a way along the beach, uh, hoping that the opportunities might get a little bit better, but as it turns out, I think it's gone the other way. And if you can see behind me here, there's uh, quite a lot of seaweed um, up this end and it goes right back to where the sea uh, breaks. So I can't really find a composition that looks nice um, without all this horrible seaweed in it, which looks really busy. I think actually I was better off at the other end of the beach uh, where there was a few rocks. I could probably get a bit of a cleaner shot. So uh, I'm gonna actually head back that way now um, and break out the tripod and the lens and just see whether or not I can compose something um, that looks worth taking. So uh, we're on our way back now to where we started more or less at the other end of the beach. So as you can see, the, um, the sun is behind a big, big, big bank of cloud. Uh, I'm not sure we're gonna get any light. It's a bit flat and dull, um, but we'll try our best to see what we can get. I was a little disappointed with how that went. Um, couldn't really find a nice composition. There were some rocks just off the beach there that made for um, a focal point. I put a, a six stop ND filter on to slow the shutter speed down and I'm hoping one or two of them turned out okay. If there is, I'll uh, take one or two into Lightroom and I'll process the image and I'll show you what I did and the processing technique that I used um, in order to do it. But um, until next time, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again on the next vlog. Well, typically, after spending all that time on a beach, just by the car park, um, is this little wooden uh, structure that's almost like a lighthouse. Uh, I think it's got a, a telescope in and some sort of sound machine, which currently isn't working at the moment, but it actually makes for quite a nice image. Um, so I've taken a couple of images, some in portrait and some in landscape orientation. Um, I'm using the uh, 0.9, a three-stop soft grad just to control the sky. Uh, this one currently is in portrait orientation. Um, this one here was F11 ISO 100 for two and a half seconds, but uh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna use that one yet until I get home and have a look on the computer and uh, see which one is, is the better of the images. And if that's any better than uh, some of the rock images I took, I'll take that one into Lightroom and show you how I process that image.
Well, we're back at the computer now, and after looking at the images, um, I think the, the lighthouse structure here actually is a better image than the rock ones that I took. I wasn't happy with those at all. Now, I have tried uh, processing this image once before and recording it, but it took almost 30 minutes for me to do that. Um, I think I took too much time in showing you every step by step, so I'm going to try and keep this as brief as I can. Uh, this is the image that I've picked as being um, the one I think I can get more out of. And there is a couple of uh, problems with it I can see straight away. Um, mainly the graffiti on the path uh, just spoils the image, so that needs addressing. And uh, it was a dull, flat day, uh, so there's not a lot of atmosphere or colour in the image. Uh, I know this is a raw file, so it's flat anyway. Um, so I'm going to try and pull some some detail out of it. Maybe use a couple of filters to try and add some colour and some interest in the sky. Um, but we'll we'll see as we progress through the image. Uh, what I normally do is obviously start in the basic tab here on the right hand side. Um, the white balance doesn't look too far off actually uh, from the shot. Um, so I'm quite happy to leave that as was, it doesn't look too bad at all. Um, now I tend to start, I don't touch the exposure and the contrast, I start here at the highlights and work my way down. Um, the highlights are not too bad, maybe try and open up the shadows to reveal a bit more detail in the, the lighthouse structure here, which is fine. It also opens up the, the foreground as well. Now I do like to set my white point and black point, which in effect all you're doing is adding contrast. So I hold the Alt key down on the keyboard, and as soon as you touch that arrow, it turns the image black, drag to the right, and you'll start to see some, some highlights appear. I drag them back until they disappear, and that's my white point set. The black, I do the opposite, hold down the Alt key again, drag to the left, and until some black appears on that white frame. And I do like to add a little bit of black into the image uh, just to get it a bit more contrasty. And that's now pretty much the contrast done. Um, working the way down, I don't want to touch any of these globally, the textures and clarity. Um, I might be able to bring out a bit more texture in the grass area here, but you can do that with a, a brush. Um, select the brush tool. making sure texture is selected. It's 100% at the moment. And then you can just brush over that area just to bring out a bit more texture in it. And then once you've covered the entire area, uh, just to make sure you can put this checkbox here, show mask overlay, and it will show you pretty much the area that you've painted. So there, I brought out the texture there and get rid of that mask now. And then reduce that from 100% down to something that looks a bit more natural, a lot less crunchy. So for me there about 17 is fine, just adds a little bit more texture to that foreground. Um, working my way down, the develop module now. Detail um, is obviously the sharpening. Now I do use the sharpening in, in Lightroom sometimes, but it's not the best. Um, but generally you can hit this target, uh, click on an area, which will show you the preview of it, and you can crank up the sharpening. Um, to your desired effect and then with the masking hold the mask and the alt key and drag it to the right and it will start turning more of the image black and what you're looking for is just to get the outline um, of the main aspects of the image white everything else black and whatever is white gets sharpened whatever is black doesn't uh, and that's pretty much a real basic sharpening in Lightroom. It doesn't do the best job. 
uh, generally if I was to, to have a, a good image that uh, I wanted to work on more I wouldn't use that technique I'd take it into Photoshop and use a high pass filter to sharpen it uh, but that's something for another day the transform section does a pretty good job on auto it will um, try and straighten out the horizon um, straighten out any vertical lines um, and it does a, a pretty good job of that on auto lens correction is something which is done um, on mine by default when I import the image I have the remove chromatic aberration and enable profile correction uh, enabled during the import process because I'll always enable them anyway um, going down to the effects is just to add a little vignette I quite like a vignette on most images but just a subtle one I don't take it much more than about 10 10 to 15 at the most uh, dragging to the left adds a black vignette to the right a white uh, but just dragging it back to the left no more than about between 10 and 15 usually 10 there is fine and you can toggle it on and off um, just to see the effect that it was has given you I quite like that and generally speaking that is pretty much my Lightroom um, process I may add uh, a graduated filter which I might just show you in here by selecting the graduated filter um, holding down the shift key to make sure that you get a straight um, okay I think my computer is a bit laggy today because it's not selecting oh here we go the wonders of Microsoft okay so now you've got the plus sign I hold the shift key down and just drag to get a nice straight line I drag it out a little bit just to make sure that there is a nice gradation position it roughly where you want it making sure that on the effects tab here you have exposure set and I drop the exposure accordingly uh, so for me here probably around 20, 20 to 30 is looking good I am using a Wacom tablet which is really sensitive and sometimes it's just as easy to type the number in um, that's looking pretty good to me now I don't want it to affect this lighthouse structure here so I turn on the luminosity um, range mask here And where it says range on the left hand side if you hold that arrow down and drag to the right it will actually remove the effect from the darker areas so you can see the lighthouse now turning from from essentially a red color um, and removing that red color from the lighthouse but leaving it on the sky so it's only affecting the sky which is where I want it click done that's now applied that gradiated filter uh, that's all I would do in, in Lightroom generally. I would now take it into Photoshop and remove the distracting elements and any, any kind of heavier processing I'd want to do. So by right clicking, edit in Photoshop and we'll take it into Photoshop and get rid of that graffiti on the pathway and then maybe try and add a filter or two just to enhance the image a little bit. Um, I wouldn't do this to every image but I wasn't particularly happy with any of the images I got that day so try and make something of the image I generally press control and the number zero just to in, um, bring it full screen and the first thing I want to do is remove this distracting graffiti uh, I like to do it on its, on its own layer and 90% of the time a spot healing brush will do the job quite nicely so I zoom in to that area and just brush over the area you want to remove and it does a really really good job in 90% of 
of the instance. And to me, that's that's fine. Uh, you may go around and just touch it up a little bit just to break any repeating patterns or anything that may have been brought in. I like to go around the border and just make sure there's nothing distracting breaking the border. Uh, but on this image, there really isn't. Uh, it all looks looks fine. Okay, control zero again. So that's now the, the graffiti uh, taken care of really. And I just want to try and maybe pull out some more detail in the sky. I flatten the image because I don't ever want to bring that graffiti back. I would now open up my Nick collection and the Color Effects Pro and use one or two filters in here uh, just to make something of the image. Here you can see was the last filter that I used, the tonal contrast, uh, which generally I quite like the effect of this. And you've got quite a lot of control where you can adjust the highlights, midtones, shadows, and the saturation of the image um, from here. And there's no right or wrong, there's nothing destructive. It's literally just dragging the sliders left and right until you find something that you're happy with. Um, now, to add another filter, if you were just to select on the right hand side, it would replace your current filter. So you have to make sure that you do hit the add filter. I've done it time and time again. You set this filter up, select another one, and it wipes out what you've just spent five minutes doing. So I, I, I like to add a bit of tonal contrast. And uh, for landscape images, sometimes the detail extractor can bring out a little bit more detail within the the image and you can toggle that on and off and that's not doing a bad job of the sky area I'm not quite a fan of what it's doing on the foreground here so you can use the minus control points here and just select a point and a radius for it to not apply to that area now if you hold down the alt key the center and drag you'll create a second control point and I just keep doing that until it's no longer affecting that foreground uh, area and for me that's a lot better than it was okay uh, and like I said I wanted to try and bring out a little bit of color in the sky and there is another filter in here that you can use. Um, and I think it's this bi-coloured filters. And you can add a bit of colour, this violet and pink to the image. Um, and again, toggling it on and off, you can see what it's doing to the image and whether you like it or not and it is very subjective some people will slate you for doing this uh, but it's, it's your image if you like it, why not I don't mind what it's doing on the sky and again I'm not so much of a fan on the foreground so again you can use the, the control points here just to remove that effect from the foreground take that away in a few control points to remove it and that's that's doing a pretty good job and you can lower the opacity either here to just this area or if you apply that group of filters now uh, it takes it back into Photoshop on its own separate layer and then you can adjust the opacity of just that layer and fine-tune the effect um, that way which works quite well so this normally only takes a second or two but obviously with the screen recording it is slowing the computer down a little bit it's applied that now and just by using the opacity slider here you can just slide it back to zero and then gradually increase it uh, to get the, the effect that you like to me that's looking reasonably good around the 50 or 60 mark 
and you can toggle that on and off just to show the effect um, you can add some other elements to an image which I have done on occasions and again some people don't like it some people slate you for it but again I just feel that the sky would have been nice if there were some uh, some birds here there wasn't any but I have in my library a collection of birds that I do use sometimes so I create uh, its own layer and drag one from my library into the image onto its own separate layer it comes in with these transform handles that you can just scale and rotate and drag into the position that you want the, the birds to be trying to make them look um, as natural as possible in the environment to me that's reasonable and it just adds another element into that sky which you know the image was was quite a boring image initially uh, and that's pretty much all I would do with this particular image I would generally flatten the image uh, if I don't plan on working on it again just to try and minimize the amount of space that it, it stores on the computer uh, it's either that or you can convert it to a smart object if you intend to go back and work on it at another point once it's flattened uh, I like just to add a, a little um, board around the outside that I've got a, a preset on my keyboard to do I hit a few times and it just adds a white border to the image which makes it look better once you bring it into Premiere Pro and just display it on the screen and that's pretty much the image done uh, it's not the greatest image it's not an award winning image but I just thought to try and show you roughly what I would do in post processing I hope you found something useful uh, apologies for the, the the vlog really this week it was completely uh, different to what I had intended I'd run into a few problems again with uh, with getting out and, and uh, issues with when I did try and get out things just didn't pan out how I wanted uh, so uh, for me next time I, I've got to plan better and uh, hopefully learn to improve as I go on but uh, thanks very much for watching if you've got any questions or comments then please leave them down below and I'll get back to you uh, but if you haven't already please consider subscribing or if you wouldn't mind just hitting the, the thumbs up button um, that would be much appreciated but thanks very much for watching and I hope to see you again soon when I get out next time